I'm Dr. Ha in -shik. Today, I'm going to talk about how we take a digital occlusion and how to complete the crown design. This is the contents of today's lecture. I will talk about two big changes that enabled modelless prosthesis, accurate occlusion taking process, natural teeth and implant prosthesis occlusal design, static and the dynamic occlusion. First, the two big changes of intraoral scanning that enabled the modelist prosthesis. First, the scan and CAD programs support of colors. The second, stunning improvement of performance of digital occlusion. Up to several years ago, the programs that are used to design prosthesis used black and white programs because the scanner to scan the impression from the treatment room used to be a model scanner which cannot scan colors. That means the impression itself doesn't have colors, therefore the model scanner accepted only monocolor images. However, as we adopted intraoral scanners, the colors of images were supported. With that, we can distinguish which part is teeth, gingiva, or gingiva cord. So we can visually distinguish these clearly. We can accurately recognize the margin area when we design a crown. That is the big advantage. So after we adopt intraoral scanners, we can understand and interpret the scan images more accurately. The scan images we used in the past, after scanning and when they are in occlusion, there were problems with a full mouth like this. As you can see, the left and right occlusion is tilted frequently. If you focus on the left occlusion, when you take the occlusion, the right side is not in the occlusion and vice versa. So balancing the left and right was a problem. For a full mouth prosthesis or if many teeth in one side need restorations, reproducing the occlusion accurately with the prosthesis was quite challenging. But these days, Trios scanners and others, for a full mouth scanning, the left and right occlusion can be taken with the precise balancing. So if you do prosthesis for multiple teeth at the same time or in the identitous area, relatively accurate occlusion taking is made possible. In this case, like this, the left premolars and molars were missing, so implant prosthesis was required. In a modernist way, the final prosthesis was accurately fabricated. Trio scanners, very accurate bite scanning function made it possible. Second, let me talk about the process for accurate occlusion taking. For that, in the case of natural tooth prosthesis, pre-prep mode should be used for the scanning. If you look at this case, due to malocclusion of the patient, number 16 and 17 crowns need to be done again. Number 16 and 17 are in occlusion, but the mesial teeth are not. In this case, you need to remove the crowns and do the prep. But before that, you need to take the occlusion before the preparation. In that situation, the crowns need to be removed and the prep should be done again. If you do not use the pre-prep mode, 
after removing the crowns after they are reduced, all the teeth are not in occlusion. And how can we take the occlusion? It is impossible to take an accurate occlusion, not only in the cases like this or natural tooth cases. You have to use the pre-prep mode scanning. After that, the crown design can be completed with the occlusion gained with the pre-occlusion state from the pre-prep mode. Second, to acquire accurate occlusion before scanning, using the articulation paper, the marking should be done after marking the occlusal contacts and the scanning is done. On the scanned image, you can find the holes indicating occlusal contacts. In the mouth, the occlusal contact points on the articulation paper should be checked to see whether they are the same as on the scanned image. If the scanning is not done by a dentist, but by a staff, in that case, the occlusal contact points on the articulation paper, whether it is accurately marked, should be checked through communication with the staff. That is very important. You need to confirm the locations of the occlusal contact points, whether they are the same or not. Third, let me talk about the occlusal design for a natural tooth prosthesis. The crown of number 36 was made because of the carious and fracture. Before reducing the tooth, the occlusal relations is marked and occlusal relation is filmed or recorded using the pre-prep mode and the prep is conducted and the prepped image is used to complete the final scanning. Using the finalized scanning, the crown is designed. In this state, we are to place the occlusal contacts on the crown. Where should they be? The functional cusp of the crown should meet the central fossa of the opposing tooth. To design the central fossa of the crown, to meet the functional cusp of the opposing tooth, that is how it should be designed. That would be the ideal occlusal design. The functional cusp of the opposing tooth is in contact with the crown's central fossa. This is how we design the crown for a natural tooth. The lower crown's functional cusp, that is the mesiobuccal cusp and distal buccal cusp, occludes with the opposing tooth's inner cuspal slope of the central fossa. The opposing tooth's functional cusp, the palatal cusp, the occlusal contacts are usually made near the opposing crown's central fossa. These are the locations, the cusp location and the central fossa. They need to be in contact with each other. How about the occlusal design for the implant prosthesis? Should it be the same as the natural tooth? To design the implant crown for upper number 17, the intraoral scanning is done. The crown is roughly designed. In these locations, occlusal contacts are placed. Generally, this is the central fossa of the crown, the palatal cusp location, which is functional cusp for a natural tooth. The contacts are made on these two locations, but personally, as for the implant crown, I think it is better to skip the occlusal contacts on the functional cusp. So the occlusal contacts are concentrated on the central fossa as much as possible, not on the functional cusp. That is the principle of design that I follow. If you look at this case, implant is placed at number 16 and the custom abutment is used to complete the crown. The implant is placed a little bit buckly. The bone resorption on the palatal side is quite severe. That's why it is 
place the broccoli, but I wanted to make the shape of a crown as normal. So this is how I designed the crown. What kind of problem occurred? After about two years of functioning, palatal side of the implant, the implant fractured. So the fractured implant was removed. This is on another case, number 47 implant in the lower jaw experienced the multiple screw loosening and the screw was tightened repeatedly but it ended up as a fracture of an implant. As you can see, the implant was placed rather distally so the mesial, the cantilever force acted on the mesial side. As you can see, the mesial side of the implant is fractured, so the fracture is the result. The implant is removed like this and it was placed again. Another case, in 2017, the implant crown was set. As you can see, the screw hole is on the palatal side. And the crown is placed buckly. In April 2020, the first screw loosening happened. In the, in the inner slope of the buccal cusp is marked with the guide interferences. In October, the second screw loosening happened. And in the next June, the third screw loosening. What are the reasons for the screw loosening? On the other hand, on the other side, the implant didn't experience any screw loosening at all because the crown is extended too much buckly. So in order to prevent the mechanical failure of an implant as much as possible, we need to design the custom abutment and the crown of an implant not to be placed too far away from the center axis. So the center axis of an abutment and the implant and the center axis of a crown should be aligned in the correct direction. Placing an implant like that is very important. Only then accurate positions of abutment and crown can be made. And the crown would have very good prognosis in the long run. However, this is a very challenging case. One side is a natural tooth and the other an implant. The implant central fossa, the occlusal contact can be concentrated, but if you have implants on both jaws, making occlusal contact of both implant central fossa is not easy. So we can make the occlusal contacts on the central fossa on the one side and on the functional cusp on the other. So when we have to design the crown for upper and lower implants at the same time, in order to reduce the cantilever force, we need to reduce as much as possible the occlusal table, buccolingual and the mesial distal. So like this, the implant crown is designed for the upper and lower implants and the occlusal points should be concentrated on the central fossa. Next, I'm going to talk about static and dynamic occlusions. When we make occlusal contacts in this static status, occlusal contacts can be made However, in trios, like this, using the articulator's lateral guide function, the interferences of guide can be reduced. If you use this process, static occlusion and dynamic occlusion can be made 
more completely in this kind of prosthesis. Let me talk about the conclusion of today. First, TRIOS 4 Oral Scanner has excellent occlusion taking capability. Unilateral or bilateral prosthesis may be required very accurately. The existing occlusion or new occlusion be acquired using the scanner based on my experience. Second, different occlusion strategy of natural tooth crown and implant crown. So we need to have different strategies, whether it is a natural tooth or implant crown. For a natural tooth crown, we can make the occlusal contacts on the central fossa and functional cusp, but for implant crown, the central fossa, which is in line with the implant's central axis, the occlusal points should be concentrated on that. Third, if upper and lower jaws have implants that come in contact with each other, occlusal contacts cannot be concentrated on the central fossa. To concentrate them on the central fossa, when you design the crown, occlusal and mesodistal occlusal table should be reduced. That is desirable, in my opinion. The lecture is finished. Let's go to Q&A to answer some of the questions. What do you think about the bridge design in the form of a cantilever, mechanical fractures, and other risks exist associated with the cantilever design, so we need to avoid it as much as possible. If we have a cantilever design with the distal pontic, that should be avoided. If you have to use a cantilever, it should be on the mesial side. The second question, it takes too much time for occlusal adjustment with the zirconia crown. How can we reduce the time? In the mouth, if you see clearly visible crown gap, the occlusal error is too much for intraoral occlusal adjustment. So in such cases, you need to scan it again and uh, fabricate the crown again. After acquiring occlusion, you need to check whether the occlusal context in the articulation paper is the same as the one scanned intraorally. Today, we talked about digital occlusion. Next time, I'm going to talk about why the patients are not satisfied with some of the prostheses and how to solve the problem. Thank you for your attention.